The government is doing nothing to help, refusing to take anybody from the Mediterranean, refusing to take more than a few hundred from Syria, even though millions and millions of people have lost their homes in Syria. And I just think this is a humanitarian crisis, the greatest we have seen since the Second World War. The bigger point I'm making is this could be a moment for Britain to show leadership so that we can get changes elsewhere in terms of immigration policy, particularly uh, when it comes to EU migration. And they haven't shown uh, that leadership. I think there are councils across the country who will be prepared uh, to, to take uh, people in. Well, let's, well, let's talk let's, about... Let's make this an argument for what the change let, we let, want to see on bigger, bigger fronts. So, just before you are do, there, Christian, well, just hang before hang you, on, you do, because you've asked for disagreement between us. Actually, what I was calling for this morning was agreement for us not to simply be dividing us between us and also calling on other political parties to support this call as well, yeah. to support the okay. government to do so and other, other parties across the country. Let's Jeremy well, Corbyn, would you restrict their benefits when they arrive? I think restricting benefits is really the wrong agenda to go down. If people are here and working and paying taxes, then surely they have a right to benefits just like anybody else does. The other point is, on the numbers, 177,000 of those were actually students coming here to study. Yeah, come to work, but contribute before you well, claim. That is the way the... most people would think about this This is an issue. implicit criticism of Yvette Cooper's record as Shadow Home Secretary. Actually, it seems to be the policy that we've put forward at the election. I think it's exactly the same. There is a real risk that we end up sounding like we think we can simply pull up the drawbridge and hope the rest of the world goes away. There's, we need to do far more to take on some of the myths that there are. You know, you're far more likely to be treated by somebody in the NHS who's non-British than to be queuing behind them. Um, Jeremy Corbyn uh, famously said that if Tony Blair has committed war crimes, he should be prosecuted. What's wrong with that? Well, I think, look, the, I don't think we should just rush to judgment when we haven't had the Chilcot report out. And that's the whole point of the Chilcot report is in order to look into what happened with Iraq uh, and what happened very many years ago. And it's right we should do so. I think, you know, just sort of making these sweeping political statements, I think, is not I helpful. I say if. The no, next Labour leader out. has got to lead our party and out of the shadow of Iraq. I think it has prevented us from having a sensible debate about Britain's role in the world and a future foreign policy at precisely the time when David Cameron has overseen a quiet diminishing of Britain's role in the world. Do you think Russia was provoked or not? I think the Russian uh, military and uh, industrial connections use the opportunity to push their government and the one thing feeds off the other. I don't say it's all the fault of NATO. It's also a responsibility. No, it it's also, the, of it's also the response of, of, uh, of Russian nationalism. Surely, in this day and age, are we heading for a new Cold War? And it looks like it. If you... Well, my opinion, <clears throat> it sounds like you're making excuses for Putin there. No, I'm not, Andy. It, sa it sounds ridiculous. like it, Jeremy. Andy, that is no, it ridiculous. sounds like it. You're you saying that it. he was kind of prompted and no, provoked Andy, into, Andy, into that doing is what he did in Ukraine. And you know it. Nobody makes well, you annex it sounded a little bit no, like hang on. because there's been an act of when, aggression here. Andy, when have you I said, ever made excuses let, let him finish. Well, let I, him finish I was listening call. carefully. You said NATO uh, kind of put pressure on Russian forces, then subsequently put pressure on Putin. There is nothing wrong with using quantitative easing to stimulate growth. Better doing that for productive industry and infrastructure rather than giving it to the banks to play around with as the they've been doing. It's growing. It's growing now. Now, growth has been late. That's By 1%. True, but it is growing. So if you want to just print money when the economy is growing, that's just going to put up inflation. How are people going to think, well, where's this money coming from? Well, well we just asked the bank to print some more money. That, how it's are you not real. Are you going to go back to PFI on the funding of um, but your public proposal... infrastructure? Hang on. Are you going to go back to PFI or are you going to go back to government borrowing in order to achieve... But you realize your, pro gross. your proposal is just like PFI on steroids to do quantitative no, but, uh, easing for infrastructure. Jeremy Corbyn, Again. what kind of leader would you be with rebels, with people who vote with their conscience rather than with your party whip? There's over 550,000 people and our members or registered supporters of the party and I hope all the supporters become members so they can take part in the policy debates that come. The new leader, whoever it is, and there's no result yet, obviously, will have a mandate from outside the Parliamentary Labour Party. From £3 supporters? and members, and I'm saying that I want the supporters to become members, I, I really do, uh, and there will have to be then policy debates within the party. If Jeremy has won, what happens does he get your we've loyalty? we to unite this party is what happens, and there are things that Jeremy has said in this campaign that I agree with. We've disagreed on defence, and you heard that earlier, but on housing, I think he's, he said things that I uh, agree with. 
uh, on education yeah, as well. Just so there is common ground. All the people campaign. around this table have said things that I agree with in this campaign, and the important thing is that this party unites. Would you be as loyal to Jeremy Corbyn as he has been loyal to previous leaders? <laughs> nice trick question there. Um, uh, I will always be loyal to the Labour Party, but let me say this. The fundamentals don't change. We lost the election because people didn't trust us on the economy or with their taxes, and because we didn't have a positive vision of a better life that most people could feel So you would retain of. your conscience okay. and they your, will remain. your and we have always irreducible won core. When people have trusted us on the economy and we have a vision for the future. Yvette Cooper, you've also said you would go onto the back benches if you don't win. Will you be loyal to him when it comes to Labour votes, or will you vote... He hasn't We're won away. yet. You know, we've yeah, still no, exactly. got weeks to go. Yeah. Lots yeah, of people yeah, are yeah. still and, making and their mind up. And Liz makes an important point, because there are an awful lot of people who actually haven't voted yet. Actually, actually, there are some people who haven't right. even had their ballots yet. Yeah, you, you have so said there is a long way to go in cabinet. this, and we've got so to keep entertained. campaigning in this, in this leadership. That's it. Nine days left before the close of voting, with the winner to be announced 48 hours after that.